Part B. In this part of the test, you will hear six different extracts. In each extract, you'll hear people talking in a different healthcare environment. For questions 25 to 30, choose the best answer, A, B, or C, which fits best according to what you hear. You will have time to read each question before you listen to the audio. Complete the answers as you listen to the audio. Now look at the question 25. You hear a discussion between a nurse and a physician explaining about different types of breath sounds. Now read the question. Hello, doctor. Can you explain what are the different types of breath sounds? Well, there are several distinct types of abnormal breath sounds. Crackles, also called rails, tend to sound like discontinuous clicking. Bubbling or rattling when the person inhales. Uh, crackling breath sounds may sound dry or wet, and physicians might describe them as either coarse or fine. Stridor is a high-pitched, harsh, wheeze-like sound that occurs while breathing in people with a blocked upper airway. Wheezing noises are high-pitched and persistent that may sound like a breathy whistle. At times, wheezing can be loud enough to hear even without a stethoscope. A short version of a wheeze, called a squawk, occurs during inhalation. Ronky are persistent, lower-pitched, rough sounds similar to snoring. Question 26. You hear a monologue by a physician explaining about Heberdeen's nodes. Now read the question. The bony growths that develop on the finger joints are called Heberdeen's nodes, or interphalangeal joints. Mostly, Heberdeen's nodes develop on the joints nearest to the fingertips, causing the fingers to appear crooked. They only develop in osteoarthritis patients. Each joint in our body has a layer of cartilage to protect the bones. Osteoarthritis causes the cartilage layer to degrade, gradually allowing the bones and the joints contact directly with each other. Over time, the bones get damaged from scraping together. Our body reacts to this body damage by developing new bones that are known as nodes. Heberdeen's nodes are one of such bone formations on the fingers of patients with severe osteoarthritis. Question 27. You hear a discussion between a nurse and a physician explaining about surgical treatments for patients with a desiccated disc. Now read the question. Hello, doctor. What are the surgical treatments for patients with a desiccated disc? There are many different surgical treatments for a desiccated disc. In the method called fusion, the vertebrae surrounding the desiccated disc will be joined together to stabilize the back and prevent movement that will worsen pain causing discomfort. In the decompression method, the extra bone or a disc material that has moved out of place is removed to make more room for the spinal nerves. In the correction method, the surgeon will make the necessary repairs to correct an abnormal curvature of the spine to relieve pain and increase range of motion. In the implant method, artificial discs, or spacers, will be placed in between vertebrae to prevent the bones from rubbing. Question 28. You hear a discussion between a nurse and a physician explaining about outcomes of TB skin test. Now read the question. Doctor, can you explain to me the outcomes of a TB skin test? Well, the outcomes for TB skin tests are not always clear-cut. 
The main consideration in a TB test is the size of the bump on the arm. If the bump is smaller than 5 millimeters, then the test result is considered negative to TB. In a case where the test bump is larger than 5 millimeters, then the test result is considered positive. But we have to be very cautious about false positive and false negative. At times, Patients vaccinated against TB using the Bacillus calmet garin can show a false positive result for TB. There is also a possibility that when the patients infected with bacteria similar to TB, false negative result happens when a person has a weak immune system or has been exposed to pathogens such as smallpox or measles. Patients infected with TB very recently and very old TB patients can also show false negative test results. You hear a monologue by a physician explaining about atelectasis. Now read the question. A partial or complete collapse of one or both the lungs is called atelectasis. That occurs when tiny air sacs in the lungs, called alveoli, deflate. The collapse of the lowest lobes in both the lungs is called bibasilar atelectasis. The lobes of the lungs are filled with millions of tiny sacs, called alveoli, which are arranged in clusters and surrounded by blood vessels. When a person breathes, the alveoli allow their blood to collect oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. During bibasilar atelectasis, the alveoli in the lower lobes of the lungs deflate and stop performing this crucial task, therefore blocking oxygen from reaching the vital organs, life-threatening at times. Question 30. You hear a discussion between a nurse and a physician explaining about liver flukes. Now read the question. Doctor, what are liver flukes? Liver flukes is a parasite disease. A patient may never know he has liver flukes. Even the doctors at times may not diagnose the condition because the symptoms of fasciolysis are similar to many other conditions. There are chances that a person with liver flukes living may never develop fasciolysis. Others may develop fasciolysis many years after the liver flukes entered the body. A person cannot transmit liver flukes accidentally to someone else unlike other parasite diseases. Liver flukes make their way from the intestines to the liver once it enters the body. To get into the liver, the liver flukes must burrow through the lining of the liver causing pain in the upper right abdomen. The two types of liver flukes that can affect people are fasciola hepatica and fasciola gigantica. That is the end of part B.